You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Broadcasting from the Blanchestan Center. This is Phoenix FM. This is 92.5 Phoenix FM. Community radio for Dublin 15. Hey everybody, it's JB Jeremy Borash and you are listening to Daryl O'Connor on the... everybody welcome to the wrestling rewind here on phoenix 92.5 fm and of course over at nathan media the true penny channel and anywhere else that podcast can be made available my name is daryl connor but i'm not alone i am joined by the one the only one and all mr martin hardy how are things martin i'm great daryl this is a an auspicious evening for us because just like we are a legendary commentating duo 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 uh, this show in your house three triple header um, is also the first ever show of the legendary Jim Ross Jerry Lawler commentating duo yeah I noticed that straight away I was like man we're finally getting to a uh, too familiar territory here but it did have Vince on commentary as well <laughs> it still did and I've taken on board everything you said last week about is Vince a good commentator or was he just the commentator when I was away in? So <laughs> and 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 yeah, it's again. I don't have that nostalgia for Vince as much as like a lot of other people because you know while the new while I was watching in the new generation year, it never really kind of grabbed me as much as the early Attitude Era did because I was yeah. like more into WCW. But yeah, it, it, <laughs> it this is a lot more palatable, and I feel bad for uh, Doc Hendricks who has been very much relegated. To uh, oh. after after cutting his hair and everything and his after beard. doing everything he did he was doing everything he did he was one of the buddy wasn't he one of the freebirds oh, freebirds yeah oh my god and he, uh, he he literally changed his whole his whole appearance his whole personality his entire everything, everything. just and, to work for the Fed <laughs> and now he's backstage interviewing <laughs> I have to say he looks rough <laughs> he's backstage like, it looks like he's been drinking all night. Well, it was it, the nineties, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, he, look, I don't know if he was or not, but you know when, no, when you're, no, when you've been drinking all night and you go and do something the next day, and you're like, man, I just, just oh, Dara, <laughs> do, <laughs> do I ever know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's what the trip back, the trip back from AEW is going to be like on Monday. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> if but, we uh, make it, if we make it, but we yeah, no, that's if we don't that's commandeer he, the plane and fly it to the US so we can see all out the week after. Oh man! Well, it's funny, no, because I would have already made that journey because I'd be back from the US. So, oh, I, that's I, right. It's crazy, yeah. Like literally, like w- when I land, I'm boarding the plane to go to AEW. A comrade Dar is quite the jet setter. He he boards a plane about as often as I board a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been better this year, but last year was a bit mad. And you know, the end of the year is a, this is what happens when you're like, oh, I'm gonna go play in a band and we're gonna do shows abroad. You end up going on planes and boats a lot, and I'm I'm terrible on boats, so you know. But yeah, yeah. Look, you're you're an international rock star. We all get it. But I bet you've never been on a tractor. Once I was on a tractor once. Bah. Yeah. I once. Spent my whole life on a tractor. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not good on farms. So you you caught me. That's true. I'm, I am That's not. It. So really, but, uh, I'm winning. You are winning. <laughs> <laughs> but Doc Hendricks here, man, he looks so rough. It's it is shocking, and I feel bad for him because I'm like, in the space of three shows, you went from being the voice of this, you know, this run to backstage. So I um I did a wee bit of 
background research on the whole Doc Hendricks, Michael Hayes thing. Actually, before you do, right, I just want to say one of my favorite appearances and sticks with me so much because I was like cognizant of it, really. Um, so it was 1999. It, and it's 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 because it's in my favorite like run of shows ever. Um, so after Unforgiven, right, there was Rebellion in yes. England, the English show, yeah, yeah. And he has my second favorite video package of all time. Um, you know, everyone knows my first favorite one is Fear Factory. Is the Fear Factory one? They actually picked it up <laughs> when I posted it the other day. They're like, oh yeah, I was like, oh man, amazing. Anyway, so he, the Rebellion show, it was him and Kevin Kelly doing commentary. And that was actually class. And uh, Doc, um, Michael Hayes and Kevin Kelly are like two lads who never really get to, never really got to work together. But I really, really enjoyed that combo. So if you've never seen Rebellion 1999, actually, we're going to watch Rebellion 1999 because I want to. Um, I, ha- I have so, it on DVD. Yeah, well, we're going to watch it because it's a fun show. I know I've already done it with, with uh, Dave a like, couple of years ago when, when, when he hadn't seen it. But it's such a good show. It has probably the best cage match that that doesn't involve jumping off the top of the cage in it, so it's totally worth it. But anyway, sorry, continue. Oh yeah, Talk so I was saying I, I did a wee bit of uh, digging into Michael Hayes. So uh, apparently he was a um, he was just really uh, not hard up, but um, he kind of just really needed to work, and he was ringing oh, WWF my. every so often, going look. Like, I'm one of the bloody fabulous freebirds. Like, have you got nothing for me? And JR kept telling him, going, look, I'd love to hire you, but Vince just, he just thinks you're a bit too Southern wrestling, whereas we are sports entertainment. And he said, look, bring me up for a tryout and I'll I'll do whatever you want. Like, a completely, <laughs> def- a completely defeated man. So they brought him up for a tryout. Defeated, man. Just totally defeated. Oh. Because they brought him up for a tryout and Vince said, so they did a bit of a commentary thing with him and Vince. And Vince was like, oh, yeah, that was great, pal. Like, really good uh, uh, chemistry, good back and forth. Yeah, that was great. That, uh, that hair. You married to that hair? <laughs> And they literally, the Fed had a barber in the building because Vince knew he was going to say this to him. And uh, Michael Hayes is just like, yeah, that's fine. Cut my hair. <laughs> so so they cut his hair. And while they were cutting his hair, Vince was in the room and Vince said, uh, that beard. Oh, my God. <laughs> you married that beard? And oh, Michael Hayes' no. only bit of rebellion was like, can I keep the mustache? Uh, and it's just like, yeah, mustaches are our sports entertainment. Oh my God. <laughs> he let him keep, but they literally, when they brought him up there, Vince knew he was going to tell him <laughs> to cut his hair and shave his beard. And they had a barber in the building ready. What a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> what is, I don't know. I think that's hilarious. Like devastating, but also like, hilarious at the same time because you know what it is Vince doesn't know what's real and what isn't that's the problem (laughs) he thinks everything is on TV and I'm convinced of it it's like he's been like that since the 90s yeah he doesn't think he's booking world wrestling entertainment he thinks thinks he's booking life he thinks he's booking world (laughs) just just W I'm the CEO of W god damn it (laughs) What? Oh the man, CEO poor Doc Hendricks. Of, of Earth. <laughs> I mean, give it time. Yeah, yeah. We see we, he comes back from this. Uh, well, uh, so apparently there's a whole new raft of charges yeah, against. So, him. so, so we're recording this on the fourth of August. So literally yesterday that he was uh, subpoenaed for more charges. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it seems like they try this with him all the time, and he somehow manages to just go away and then comes back stronger than ever like he went away from being ousted came back sold the company and was still CEO and made like 4 billion I yeah, mean, and made every like... time the, you know what it is every time they strike him down he comes back stronger he's like the like a Jedi or something he, he is like, he <laughs> literally is he's unbelievable he could literally murder someone on screen and he'd do you know what he'd do he'd like god damn it getting a bit hot after I murdered that child on television. I better, I better take two weeks off, pal. 
and 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 grow a funny mustache. I don't know, man. It's just how can you not love Vince? That's the problem. Like, well, that's just, that that's is the problem. problem. He's got all these absolutely a sexual massive assault problem. charges. Even if you don't want to love him, he forces you to love him. He forces you to love him. It's like, God, the product, you, you do some terrible things with it as well. And everyone is not happy with it. But God damn it. You're still going to cheer him. <laughs> it's just, it's just got to happen. I mean, I don't know how he does it. I really don't. But every time he comes back and that's it. So, you know, maybe he, he could be present one day. Who knows? Oh, he's he he's the negative version of uh, Shane McGowan. Whatever yes. superpower Shane McGowan has, Shane McGowan will outlive us all, but Shane McGowan is a force for good. Vince McMahon is Shane McGowan's counterpart. He is a force for evil and he will outlive all of us. But see, he doesn't think he's a force for evil. No, but it's like the classic wrestling thing, like the heel doesn't think he's a heel. That's the thing. <laughs> he's like the ultimate heel in life, but <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Oh man, Vince! What? What? A, <laughs> he's he's such look, a legend. Like he's, he's, yeah, he's, look, just he's for all the reasons. Nothing else about his myriad alleged crimes. Uh, he is a fascinating human being. It's like, crazy. It, and like, again, I I think it all comes down to he thinks the real world doesn't exist, and there's just WWE, and no, that's it. And yeah, and the whole world is WWE. Him. And he books it. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. Like to go so far as to have like a barber there, because you know how this conversation is going to go. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's you know like it's going to go there. You know, that's I mean, it's like crazy. A tiny, that's like two percent of the Vince madness. <laughs> you know, like that's just I. I honest to God, I I don't know how you'd ever do it, but because he's so litigious, and the WWE is. Like bloody North Korea, it's like so um, inward. Like even when they do documentaries and that, they do them internally and everything. But my God, I would love to see a truly independent uh, film made about Vince McMahon's life. It'd just be the most deranged thing. You'd have to sit and watch it like three times in a row <laughs> to, <laughs> to try and comprehend it. Or it's, it's like that. Um, apparently, there's this meme now that just knowing about its existence makes you go mad. Um, I'd, and yeah, I think it would probably have that effect where like you watch it and you just lose your mind completely. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, anyway, look, this show it wasn't great, folks. No, I'm not going to not going to beat around the bush here. I'm not going to bury lead because we did. We spent ten minutes burying the lead. <laughs> this is, but before, the, just briefly before we get started, like you were saying, it is August fourth. Uh, so by the time this comes out, the big event will already have happened. But yes. next week, we promise you, we know that this weekend there's a huge show on. And next week, we will have a review of Collision for everybody. Okay. <laughs> now, <clears throat> in your house. All joking aside, we are going to watch SummerSlam. We will we will review it. But there's oh God, no point yeah, in it. SummerSlam's on, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I might stick that on after Collision. In the <laughs> Finn Balor's going for the title. Come on, you have to, you have to support it. Look, I do like a bit of Finn. Here's the thing, right? Do you, I want to say something very? Can I say something controversial? Is is that wrong? I don't know. It is. It is pre Watershed. How? Like, are we talking? Okay, I, no, no, no. I'm not going to effing and blowing at me, but I'm going to say the Irish women's football team went to the World Cup, right? Congratulations, they went to the football. Okay, great. I don't. I'm not a football person. You know this as well as as well as I'm not. I'm not. I really don't care. But there was a whole big thing about them and they're getting brought back home and I don't think they scored one goal, right? And at the same time, we have Finn Balor going for a world champion. He probably win it. Now, I know it's not the same thing, but no, it's, should, should, we not, should we not care? Well, me and you had this exact same you know, discussion a couple of months ago when we were talking about how Becky Lynch yeah, had exactly. been... Exactly. The biggest WrestleMania ever in front of the biggest live crowd ever. And if you were watching it from Ireland, like by Irish media, no one would know what was happening. And I mean, that's, and I'm just kind of just watching this. I mean, like, look, fair play, he went there, but it's like, Finn might win and he probably will win. And it's like, <laughs> well, I, I just would like some kind of consistency from, from, from the Irish media. Yeah, he will, yeah. God, I think I he will. Someone to bet that yeah. scab. 
I think I think he will. Yeah. Um, Seth and then steals his wife. <laughs> steals Becky. Yeah. I that really is. hate Seth. Like real life, <laughs> hate Seth Rollins. Why? Like, I, because whenever hundreds of people are being fired by WWE, uh, he hopped yes. onto his Instagram yes, 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 to yes, yes. shill for the come. Oh, oh, don't blame the Fed, guys. This is just another challenge. Like you're going to okay. overcome while I no, still have my fair. job. That's Shut up, Rollins, you prick. That's very fair. Mark tape, 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Prick's all right, is it not? No. no. <laughs> That's what you get when you get the injection. Or are you, you tell me you're not no, blocking no. prick because it's some kind of anti vax thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, you're killing me here. Come on. <laughs> Save it for after 14, 14 minutes. There we go. Uh, just. Mark the word that's there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. Folks, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, you, you get this anyway, so so don't worry. But no, I, look, I mean, you're right. Uh, I didn't... Um, yeah, I f- actually forgot that happened. So, I mean, that's fair. I just... Look, I, I'm not a big fan of Seth Rollins anymore because he crippled Sting. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. And just kind of ruined his... And, and you know, this is all... Run. But this is all before we even get into that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, his, his gimmick is very annoying. But I mean, you're supposed to hate him. You're not supposed to like not hate the man, but you're supposed to hate the character, right? No, no, but that's not heel heat. That's yeah. I hate the term X Pac. We need to change X Pac heat to Rollins heat. That's <laughs> that's go away heat. That's uh. and I hate um, saying that because on this particular show, one of the bl- only bloody good matches was the Endo Three Kid. You know what was upsetting though about this whole show? <laughs> what? Like no, eighty percent was. Uh, oh yeah, all of it. But no double J. No double J. No, no Rody. As we covered in the previous in your house, it, the, it didn't. It didn't feel. It didn't have that big match feel that the former number one contender who beat the rock, who nearly beat the rock at the peak how, of the edge here. There, could it? Hell yeah! It how, just uh, it had no big stars on it. How do you expect to sell a pay per view? without the former number one contender who came within three seconds of beating the rock at the peak of the attitude era. Like how do you how do you even sell a pay-per-view? Well I don't that? know how this, I this one didn't. It was pretty poor. Well I mean uh, so 95 in general is pretty poor. But like uh I mean so SummerSlam that's a big one did about two hundred and five thousand. This did 160. Uh, 160, okay it's not it's not great, but it's, I mean, it's fairly respectable. I suppose In Your House 2 did 280. <laughs> and see, that's the thing. That's because, I had, that's because I had double J. Yeah. And, yeah. and they were all yeah. over that show. J-E-double-F-J-A-double-R-E-double-T, double J, Jeff Jarrett. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, like, that's, that's. There's no opinion here. That's just maths. No, it's just maths. It's facts. It's just these, maths. these are just facts. Yeah. Oh, well, man, I, tell you, I, tell you, I don't know who, who was running the numbers in the, in the 90s, but they should have thrown money at the lads and said, listen, come back. Come back. What are you doing? Wait. No, 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 no. Don't listen to that. You're coming back. Look how much money we're making. But no, they didn't do that. Think about how different things could have been. There would have <laughs> been no Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, in double Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett. Do you know what else Jeff though? Like, not even being facetious. See that angle that they'd set up at In Your House too, that they never yeah. actually got to finish. They did where, pay it off eventually. They did where, pay it off eventually. So this is the one where Jeff Jarrett was out doing his uh, his song. Yeah, with my baby tonight. Absolute certified banger. But it's actually the road dog singing. Yeah, no, they did pay it off eventually. Oh, did they? They did, yeah. Just oh. like yeah, but still, years like, later. The, oh, yeah, but you're missing years the... Later. The momentum, like that, would have been a huge storyline. That would have like, been a WrestleMania match. That would have been class. An absolute WrestleMania match. Like it's those. Like look, WWE have done some super things before, where I think Edge and Kurt Angle were feuding over um, shampoo, despite <laughs> oh, the fact that Kurt Angle was going a, bald. Wasn't there a guy <laughs> in the audience with a sign that just said they are fighting over shampoo? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it was. It was Edge and Kurt Angle. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but here, look, on this, on this pay-per-view, Bret Hart and uh, is it Jean-Pierre Lafitte are fighting over a jacket. So That's true. That's true. See, I, I mean, the thing of it is, it's like, if it means something to them, it, you know, obviously it makes the feud, but if you're able to be like, actually, that makes a lot of sense and it isn't really stupid, there's a lot more to hang on to there. And fair enough, someone stealing the credit for a, a legitimate hit song that's pretty good. That that's like yeah. that would fly now. But because it's not like a uh, a jacket or a shampoo or and it no, it's actual to the very heart of Jarrett's character. Yeah. And like the roadie's character because it's like he's a roadie. He's right. So look, I don't know if people know this or not. No disrespect to any anyone who's a roadie out there. They're not the one out oh, there. No, and before you even go on, Dara, let me just clarify that officially, as a podcast, our position is that we have more respect for all roadies than the road dog. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. <laughs> uh, so look, so a roadie is someone who helps set up the gear for gigs and tests the mics, right? That's what they do. And they test it. And, uh, you know, and it's a very important job. And it is. And I mean, you know. They uh, also... Someone, scour the audience for yes. young ladies who may be willing to meet the band afterwards well that that can be uh, either confirmed nor denied but it, some, yeah, people there would, some people would some uh, people would liken it to the godfather's gimmick I <laughs> would <laughs> I'm just saying that that's a no that's from a tech from, from a technical standpoint maybe the bigger bands but from a technical standpoint they're the lads that do all the technical stuff right yeah. now it isn't a very glamorous position to do that and I mean, it it, it, it kind of sucks that that's the gimmick. But what's interesting about it is it's like, right, D- Double J is getting all the women. He's getting all the, the fame and power from it. And then he's still been shown to be all like just a lowly roadie. That has a lot of motivation. As I said, if that oh, had yeah. been followed through, that's a WrestleMania main event. You put an, an IC that's belt on great. that? There you go. I mean, think right Great yourself. story. You Especially back in the 90s when the well, even, IC we, belt was like... Like a serious like uh, contendership, but you could even do that now. You could do it in in AEW or WWE. Really think about like Elias, like uh, Elias has been lying the whole time, and it's someone else is there. I mean, that's how you make a character. Like there, just oh, literally do oh that. God. Why are we even talking about Elias? Jeff Jarrett is literally still wrestling in AEW. But, but this is Why what I'm. We so- have Jeff Jarrett come out at Wembley and sing a song, but backstage it's actually Satnam Singh. There you go. Who's doing the who's doing the vocals? See this one. Oh saying, my god. Here, could, we're could, we're gonna pop mad if, if Double J comes out at Wembley. Oh man, I, I am praying Double J could, like shows up because he's the best. <laughs> he really is. Yeah. And I've so much more respect for Double J in WWE now than I ha- ever have. Because like I, oh, I was always like, you know, yeah, WCW, he wasn't great, but you know, whatever. TNA is when he really shined. It's like, no, he was the, the legitimate star of 1995. So and even like he knew like what the 90s were. Like he knew what the era was all about. Like he's walking out with that hat with the stupid lights on it and everything. Like none of that would fly now. But in the no. 90s, that was like. It doesn't get more 90s than Double J. <laughs> you know, legitimately. Yeah, he, like they say genius isn't appreciated in its time. He gen like when you look back on wrestling, like he genuinely is like like a like one of the the top gays. Like here's the thing, we're not doing a bit. Like legitimately. Oh no. He is fantastic. You know? It, it's he, and I, he's wrestling now and his matches like admittedly he's doing mostly tags and stuff like that, but his but, matches are still great. But when when we do get to more TNA stuff and you see his in ring his in ring work, like the body work he does there, it's up there with the best of them. And it he, really is. He actually he had a he had a six way or a yeah, six man match um on Dynamite this week with him, uh Jay Lethal and um oh I can't remember the name of the huge guy that he's like seven foot five. He's terrifying. Uh versus the elite. And like that huge guy was in the ring with like Kenny Omega and he was looking he was making Kenny Omega look like a child. Mm-hmm. But it was an incredible match. Um and Jeff Jarrett was brilliant in it and he has his guitar Actually, and he's... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go through our archives and find the Jeff Jarrett interview. And oh. We're going to put, and we're going to put it on the feed 
as a celebration of Jeff Jarrett. That's what we're going to do. You, that's coming you up. Don't this even week. owe us an X Pac Euro. No, that's going up free for everybody. So if you haven't, if you haven't, and you're just checking us out here, or you found the podcast somehow, thank you so much. Or if you're listening to us on the radio, I mean, thank you so much again. But go over near to no media. It's going to be there. Subscribe, subscribe to True Penny Channel as well. But we're going to put up bonus content, which is going to be um, the Jeff Jarrett interview. So, oh, and also. Uh, Impact Wrestling are doing shows again, which is great. So uh, there might be more Impact uh, content coming up in the future as well. So, but for now, man, we 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 you always know what the show is bad because you don't want to talk about it. That's <laughs> how you know the show is bad when when we bury the lead so significantly we're talking about anything else but the show. Uh, so, yeah. so look. Uh, we, there was a change up in the commentary build. The the look was a little bit different. This is the first pay per view really uh, of the of the series that really looked like a proper pay per view. It seems like it's found its footing. Um, still, they have the the same graphic, <laughs> which <laughs> is still just so cheap. Uh, but the actual production looked quite well. Um, I, the the nineties uh, aesthetic is really starting to to um, appeal to me um, now. Where it's you know. It, it, it's kind of smoky, but like in, in a nice way. Um, the, the stage looks good. The pyro looks good. Um, as I said, the attendance, about, about 5,000, just over 5,000. And the 24th of September, 1995 in uh, Michigan. So look, the main story going into this one was it was three belts, one match. The main event was going to be Diesel and Shawn Michaels. Uh, against the British Bulldog and Yokozuna. Now, we didn't know it would be British Bulldog because Owen Hart wasn't there. And basically, it was either the tag team belts are going to change or the Intercontinental Championship could change or the WWF Championship could change. Now, here's the question I have on this. Now, we will, we will go through a match by match. But, Martin... Of course. Um, I wanted to start here because this was interesting, right? This was... Basically, the reason why we started doing this show, uh, like this arc on the show, was we wanted to map when the Attitude Era stuff starts. Yes. This is a very Attitude Era match, right? Is Now, look, I don't know. I haven't checked this, but you do often do a fair amount of research before we come on here about these. Was this the first time that this happened, where they'd have single belts defended in a tag match? I've... So I'm, I'm going purely off memory here. I haven't, I haven't researched that specific um, uh, idea. But I I can't remember anything like this because it's so odd. And because in the pay-per-view, they go to such great length, lengths to explain it so many times. So so it's um, it's supposed to be uh, Yokozuna and Owen Hart, right? Uh, the shoot reason Owen Hart isn't there is because his wife's having a baby. Right. Uh, the in-story reason is he's he's just not showed up, uh, and you know we'll we'll get into the match. He does show up eventually, but the shoot reason was his wife is having a baby, and he missed his earlier flight, and his later flight would get him in. Sort of depending on when the pay per view started, would get him in maybe in time for the main event. So they didn't know if he was going to be there or not. But the stipulation itself is that if um, either. Owen Hart or Yokozuna are pinned. Michaels and Diesel win the tag titles. But if uh, Michaels, the IC champion, is pinned, whoever pins him on the other side wins the IC title. And the same for Diesel's world title. It's like, like you say, it's not a great pay per view, but that's a kind of a kind of a fascinating stipulation. And it's a pity that they didn't do more with it. Because I was kind of expecting maybe, you know, maybe like a Bulldog. So it was Bulldog took Owen's place. Bulldog and Yokozuna to be like really like leaning over the ropes and tagging each other to get in to be. They weren't though. They were like. Yeah. And and then on the other side, I was expecting Michaels and Diesel to be like, oh, no, you go in. I don't want to. I don't want to risk my title in a stupid tag match. It was complete opposite. Complete opposite. So it was so set up for like, like, like great psychology. Yeah, and they just did nothing with it. Well, see, look, I I think they were kind of. You might be coloured there by the fact that you're so used to. Well, one, you hate Shawn Michaels, <laughs> and I, two, I really do. And, I and know I, you do. 
and and it's okay. And I'm this is why I'm saying to you, I make an analysis for this because you're not only colored by that, but you're also colored by the fact it's Kevin Nash, whose whole gimmick is doing that exact thing in WCW. <laughs> yes, yeah. like literally. Because if you're watching, I, I, yeah, I, I when you said it, I'm like, this is why. So Shawn Michaels, you know, would kind of do this anyway in DX later on, but Kevin Nash, his whole gimmick would be that. Where he's just like, no, I'm not going in. I'm just gonna, you know, and it's um, it's hard because they're both playing uber baby faces here. Yeah, and it like a complete white me, as pure as the driven snow baby faces here, and at the same time you're like, but this is not what you do, you know. So there is that big cognitive dissonance where you're expecting, because I mean, a couple of years later, own heart would be the one who would be doing that. You know who would yeah. be going in, and and or he he was known for this as well. So, yeah, it, I think it's just a case of it's, it's we know what's the, coming. It's kind of fascinating, like, like you say, that is literally how Nash booked himself in WCW yeah. every time, and it's it's one of the fascinating cases of the the whole Monday Night War. Like we always talk about, you know, what if Brett hadn't left, or what if Brett had. Um, not been injured and then the invasion angle had happened, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What if Michaels had left and went to WCW and it was him, yeah. uh, uh, Nash, Nash. Nash and Hall, yeah, basically running WCW like however they wanted. Like, it's, it's kind of fascinating to think about. Obviously, it that never happened true. because uh, Vince and Shawn Michaels are sleeping with each other. What's that? 30 minutes. That's the cut. It's sleeping. <laughs> it's not a swear word. I know. But I still, <laughs> guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm writing the times down for when I have to edit stuff for the FM show. <laughs> no, the, the, the good people of Dublin need to know. The good people of Dublin will know on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think you're, I, I think you're spot on the money there. That, like, it would have been very, very different. And it, it is kind of weird here to watch this because this, you know what, you know what this show actually feels like? Um, it feels like a WCW show. And I know, I, I know it's very, an easy oh, cop out to say, but that's no, what it feels like. No, that's a good one because a lot of the times when people invoke WCW, it's really lazy. That's why it feels lazy to say it, but it genuinely does. No, but yeah, it actually does work in, in, the, in fact, I have in my notes that the main event, even though it features like a load of big stars, because it's like a multi-man tag thing. Yeah. It's very, very house very showy. Very flat. Very house showy, yeah. And also, I mean, I don't know if you want to save this for the end, but also um, the next night on Raw, they just reversed the decision. They were like, yeah. oh, Owen Hart wasn't actually supposed to be in the match, so you can't pin him. So they reversed the decision. And yeah. then, like, 20 minutes later, Owen Hart and Yokozuna lost the tag titles anyway. So the whole thing just meant nothing. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> In other words, folks, it was pointless. It was meaningless. And, yeah. and all that, like, yeah, I, I mean, that, that kind of book ends. Uh, I think they knew this show was a flop when they did it, you know, because there was no big match feel. There was no... Like, if you miss this one, as I said, uh, sorry, as you said, like, the, the next night on Raw, they were like, ugh, doesn't yeah. matter. And you're like, so what did we what did we spend our VHS money on? You know? Exactly. And I, I mean, maybe they'll justify it by going, well, you only charged half the price of a normal pay-per-view or whatever, but, you know, nah, being I, charged I, half the price of something for nothing is still a rip-off. Yeah, exactly. And, like, look, I... I would say there's nothing on this show. Like, again, it's a case of there were matches on this that I would have rather had seen. And it's funny, actually, there's an Undertaker match with Mabel, which is hilarious. Maybe that's where he decided <laughs> I'm never doing that again and, and, and stored it in his mind where he's like, yeah, no, we're, we're not going against Mabel again. He's going to be my mate forever. Um, uh, look, there was nothing on the show that I would that made me want to watch it. You know, yeah. there was there was no big match there was no cool moments there was like I did I did kind of pop for Diesel and Shawn Michaels now that I get Shawn Michaels' gimmick I'm like oh yeah the energy's there and, and Diesel's oh, there definitely. And, 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 they're having, you know, and they're having a grand old time together you know and for a lot of this like 
for a surprising amount of this, the crowd is going bucksy wah. Oh yeah, they are all like, over the place. They 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 absolutely love it. And the thing about it is, like, I think if you were in the crowd, or even when I was watching this, look, it's an hour and just under two hours, like, right, about six minutes away from two hours, and it's it's surprisingly watchable. Like, again, you're watching and you're just like, oh, this is well, it's, this it's. <sighs> It even, it, it even has Dean Douglas, who would become Shane Douglas, oh, the franchise. We're, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we will talk about that. And I was just like, all right, you know, just but for this, the nostalgia this seems hit of to it. be, so far, this seems to be a, a theme of these in your house pay per views, in that when you break them down match by match, they're kind of terrible. But when you view the product as a whole, it's kind of so bizarre. And so odd, and the fact that it's less than two hours, it's it's almost worth watching. Yeah, and look, as I said, it's when we go match by match. I want people to kind of like keep that in mind. This out of all the shows we watched so far is a show that that is kind of you either watch the whole lot or you don't watch any of it. Yeah, and well, the only thing I'd say is the 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 Bret Hart Jean Pierre Lafitte match is is actually like it's a genuinely good match. Yeah, but I did not care about Jean Pierre Lafitte. Yeah, it was <laughs> stealing Bret Hart's jacket. Yeah, it was like it could have been anyone in there, and it should have been anyone in there. But yeah. anyway, so look, um, we'll start off here. We'll go match by match. So uh, the match, the, the show started off with Salvio Vega defeated Waylon Mercy. Now here's the thing: I've never seen Waylon Mercy before, or I have, but not. It's been a long time, and I haven't really seen him in context as an adult. Um, that gimmick is class. Um, it's obviously what? trying to be. What to be like, the hell did they do with Will and Mercy? It's supposed that to be his... C- Cape Fear kind of thing, and it's yeah. unreal. And it's like, what? How did you not just print That's all the his money with this guy? Only pay per view appearance. What the hell are they doing? I don't know. I mean, this guy. Because look, there really wasn't much to write home here about oh, across the board on this. Oh, hold on. This is the highlight for me. Of the show. While I, while I go through my notes here. So, like, it's 1995. So, look, Wayland Mercy isn't magnificent in the ring. He's not bad in the ring. Like, no, you know what he is? You know what he is? And I have it in my notes here. He is 1995 Bray Wyatt. Bye. That's what he is. That's what he is. But that means even more in 1995 because the in-ring standard in 1995 was dreadful. Yeah, but I like, mean, look, he, he, was, he was not an in-ring technician, but... He no, when he, he walked out, it wasn't bad in the ring. Like no, he, well, no, but when he walked out, everybody was like, "What the? You know, what's well, going on here?" This is so like we're going to get into this, but this is Will and Mercy's only pay per view match, right? They very shortly after this got rid of Will and Mercy. This pay per view also had Henry O'Godwin. Yeah, <laughs> it had Bob Backlund doing a presidential gimmick. It yep. had. Dean Douglas, it had, as we already discussed, Jean-Pierre Lafitte. Like, h- how do you go through this and go, God, do you know who we need to get rid of? The only interesting character on the entire show. I don't mind. His look is unique, uh, like to put it mildly. But it's so it just works. You know, I mean, when you're watching him, it's like, it's yeah, genuinely- I, w- I want unsettling. He, he took the word right out of my mouth. It is unsettling. genuinely unsettling. He, yeah. he strikes you as someone like, he's not like the Undertaker. He's not spooky and scary. No, he's just like this guy. He just strikes you as someone. If you were trapped in a room with him, you'd be very yeah. nervous. That's it. I mean, like you get the sense off him that this guy is actually dangerous. Yeah. And, and, and that's he amazing. Does, he doesn't need to be great in the ring. And they no. should know this because they have The Undertaker, who in 1995 is not great in the ring. <laughs> but that's what's funny. It's like they've made this mistake. 20 years later, or 25 years later, they, they would make the same mistake again with, with Bray Wyatt. It, watching this guy, it's like this is this is exactly all the problems that we would say about modern Bray Wyatt. But encapsulated it, in this one match. It comes down to Vince. Vince doesn't do subtlety. Vince doesn't see like this kind of weird, just very subtly unnerving character. 
he doesn't see the potential in that. He only sees it in like big, obvious. I am a literal zombie. You know, he he doesn't see the the real quiet creeping horror in I someone who's just just a little bit off. But what was surprising as well is like he's a big guy who you know he he has like a look. But I think you're right. I mean, if you had to put a mask on him and he's like, oh, you know, a big chainsaw or something, ah, fair, probably fair enough. But like, I don't know. I would take, I would take this character at an actual run any day of the week over Savio Vega, who won with oh with God. a spinning heel kick. <laughs> <laughs> like, come yeah. on, lads. A spinning heel kick. Terrible. Terrible ending also, to a mid-tier match. No, it's interesting, though. Sorry. No, it's interesting. The yeah. crowd boom. Vega. The crowd do yeah. Vega. Of out course of the they do. Building. Because even in 1995, the building. while the WWF might be unsophisticated, the the fans aren't. The fans yeah. can see, oh, here's this weird, happy, bouncy baby face, like clone 500. Like we've got 500 of these happy, bouncy baby faces. Versus the only subtle, interesting character in the whole of the Fed. Yeah. It's a, an unbelievably missed opportunity. And you can see it. Like, it, again, guys, if, if you haven't seen the show, again, fair play. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that works. But um, go back and watch it at the end of the first match. The, the front row, the front row, there's an audible boo, right? And then the entire front three rows are just booing. <laughs> they're just booing and it's not like the like stupid boo that people do nowadays where it's half-assed they are climbing over the barricade booing <laughs> it's actually wild like to see it because it would never happen nowadays you know because obviously security and stuff would stop it but it's uh i i don't know how vince didn't get the message where people wanted something like that you know well vince has a 40-year career of not getting the message you know so <laughs> So look, the next match would uh, be Psycho Sid versus Henry O'Godwin. Sid would eventually get the win in a very poor match. Uh, there would be slop and everything else. This did very nothing for me. Uh, and I was not sports entertained, not even Absolutely. slightly. So there's this This match has a couple of problems. One, we've just had Whale and Mercy. We've just had someone who is genuinely unsettling. And then out comes Psycho Sid, you know, big, gurning his teeth and making growling noises and rolling his eyes. And like, you're not a psycho. Whale and Mercy's a psycho. You're like, just a yeah. Uh, it's, you're just an Amadon. It's like I'm, I'm genuinely afraid of the guy who just left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're just ridiculous. You know, it's like yeah, like your crown, would, of, your crown of moment would show up for five years where you'd break your ankle on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> like I would, I would fight Psycho Sid. Like he'd beat me, but he'd just oh, yeah. beat me up. Is all he'd do. Whale and Mercy might eat my skin. I don't know. I don't know see, what Whale and Mercy's gonna do. That's the thing. I mean, like you get the sense that you, you could wake up chained in his basement. Like you know, like, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. Or or he could just be an, a nice, interesting dude. You just don't know. And I mean, that's... exactly. But do you do you want to roll that dice? Exactly. <laughs> you know? The other the other thing about this match is. Um, Sid in the course of two pay-per-views has gone from headlining to being in the second match on the card against Henry O'Godwin. That's because he is he atrocious. and he like you can see in this match that he is really starting to see where things are in WBF for him because he does not give a fiddler's flip about this man. He's not no. trying. No. He's sandbagging loads of stuff. He's not even, like, even his psycho stuff is, like, half arsed. Like, he's, uh, like, some of the moves he does in this are shut. Like, you wouldn't see it in training. No. Like, but well, he doesn't care. Why would he care? Exactly. Because he, he, like, outside of wrestling, like, I mean, the, the, the real guy sees himself as a, a top like top guy and he's not been treated like one so he doesn't care anymore 
See, the thing about it is, it's it's funny. It's like it's the, it's the thing that people think about Jeff Jarrett and might have happened with with Jeff Jarrett, but without any justification. I mean, Psycho Sid is not Double J. You know, he really isn't. He's I very can't boring. Even sing. Can't even sing. Doesn't have a roadie. Doesn't have a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Rody is the ultimate bookly. That, that's how you know. Ultimate that's how you know bookly. you've made us. <laughs> you have a Rody, exactly. Oh. So look, we have what actually is is quite a, an interesting Steeper match, to be honest with you. It's the British Bulldog defeats Bam Bam Bigelow in about 12 minutes. Now, both lads are actually quite good. Uh, yeah. The Bulldog ha- has a mixed history in the WWE, particularly when you come back in the Attitude Era and be very disappointing. Um, and it's a generous uh, <laughs> description. Yeah, that's fair. But um, this was very good. Uh, I think working with Bam Bam, who was a lot bigger than him, a lot more competent than the Bulldog, and the match itself, they letter each other for about 12 minutes. It's it's very good. It is very good. It's great um, big man power move stuff. And Bam Bam is still, maybe, maybe not at his peak, but he's still in his heyday. He's still he is. Guy. Yeah. Who yeah. can move? Who can flip? Who can jump? He's he's like surprisingly quick and agile. Like I said, maybe not quite as he was in in previous years, but he's definitely not like. Oh God! Do you remember when we were doing the yeah, WCWR? WCW. Yeah, Bam Bam would show up, and my like my heart would break. I just couldn't. <laughs> yeah, he, he he's not ECW Bam Bam, but he's not WCW Bam yeah, Bam. Yeah, but he's so. still he's still Bam Bam. Like he's yeah. still definitely Bam Bam in this great match. Um. Really, like, like you say, nobody's going to call it like a five-star technical classic or whatever. But when you're doing a pay-per-view, you don't need every bloody match to be a a five-star classic. You need like your comedy match, and you need your technical match, and you need your big powerhouse match. And this was a great powerhouse match. I really enjoyed this. So the next match, uh, actually, I want to give you some some thoughts on this. Um, Dean Douglas with Bob Backlund versus Razor Ramon. Uh, and and Dean Douglas would get the win. You had some thoughts on this? Yeah, so this Dean Douglas thing, I actually started, before I watched In Your House, I watched uh, SummerSlam 1985. Okay. And that's where this Dean Douglas character was introduced. Yeah. Um, and he was, for the whole of SummerSlam, he was backstage and he would do like critiques of the matches. Yes, he would. Uh, do the kind of way Taz does like critiques of current AEW matches to be like, oh, this is where he got him and such. But Taz actually knows what he's talking about. This was <laughs> drivel. Like, <laughs> Taz doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't think that's ever been said about Taz ever. Uh, well, when you can say that about Taz compared to Dean Douglas, that's fair. Uh, man, this gimmick just flopped. Yeah. And I know ECW. Especially in 1995, I think it was even was it still Eastern Championship Wrestling rather than Extreme? Yeah, I, no, ECW was very very early on. I'm gonna just quickly but Google, he, Google it. Okay, but the point he left for this, and he was their top gay. Like he went from being the top gay in an admittedly much smaller company to being like a joke. Like did his character ever really recover from no, this? No, 93 is, is when that happened. 93, was it? Yeah, 93, so, yeah. But did his character ever like recover from this this Dean Douglas thing? Yeah, he became the franchise. Oh, so yeah, but this is when he went back later on. Yeah, you know, he, no, no, I mean, he, he never got better uh, with, with this. this yeah, he never, he never in, no. in WWF, it was never... No. No, he was never. Yeah. He was never a top guy in WWF. But the Ever. thing is that, I mean, like, not even close, actually, <laughs> not even close. Like, yeah. I I don't understand, like, how this gimmick is is dead from the all. Like, how did nobody go? This is a terrible idea. Do literally anything else? Like, it's just it's particularly in this new gen era when you have bloody bin men and hockey players and you know, everybody's gimmick is a job, bring this guy in and his gimmick is that he's a a professor 
Pro- professor of I what? mean, look, Matt Stryker, Matt Stryker would do this a couple of years later and it would be much better, much better done. Yeah. But I it's mean, still, and then you'd have Damien Sandow who would literally do it almost word for word. Um, look, it, it, these kind of gimmicks are always hard to get over. They never really work. Um, like Triple H was still kind of doing something similar with the... Oh my God. Yeah. You know, with the Hunter Hearst Elmsy thing. It's just, it's, it's a it's a symptom of its time, you know? And look, the match itself, I don't really have too much to say about it other than it happened. And um, it, but, but it is what it kinda, is. But that's kind of, that's part of the problem. They actually have a, so it's it's Dean Douglas versus Razor Ramon. And they actually have a pretty competitive match. Like if you just look at just the match itself, there's actually... It's a lot of really good back and forth. There's mm. a couple of really innovative moves. I will never tire of mid nineties Razor Ramon pulling out the Razor's Edge. Yeah, but yeah. Before he completely lost his body to uh, to drugs and drink, my God, his ability to hoist these huge men like up on his shoulders and then lift them over his head. It's it's more impressive than like a military press or anything. Like it's because once they're up there, like they're pure sandbag. Like they can't help him. He just has to lift them on his own. Well, look, Dean Douglas would get the win um, in, in a very uh, roundabout way with the one two G kid interfering. Um, in the five minutes we have left, Martin, for the show. Uh, I don't know what you have to say about Bret Hart other than uh, he, he well, was do you know what? the best match of the night. It's, so I'm not even going to because it's the best match of the night and deserves a wee bit more than the five minutes we have left. So <laughs> rather than talk about the Bret Hart match, I want to talk about something that happened before the Dean Douglas match. Okay. And it was an advertisement for WrestleMania The Special. <laughs> I don't know if did they have this on your I don't know if no. you watched this on No DVD. no I, I watched it on the network I didn't watch it on DVD no Okay well there's an advertisement There's nothing for, like that on there now Oh well there was an advertisement for WrestleMania the special and it's basically a 2 hour show that they put on on Fox so this is um when's in your house oh, Wait hold on hold on hold on hold on is this the thing you're talking about where it was the football player versus Bam Bam that WrestleMania. Well, that, yeah, it was WrestleMania 11. Yeah. yeah, sorry. No, they did have it. They did have it, yeah. So uh, this took place in September, right? So WrestleMania happened, what, pretty much six months ago? Or yeah. Whatever. So basically, they just took the main matches of WrestleMania and put them on Fox, on TV, and called it WrestleMania The Special. And it's no, no. just... No, well, like fair enough that's grand but what <laughs> what annoyed me about it was multiple times during it Vince McMahon goes it's Wrestlemania it only happens once a year and I'm going Vince this is literally an advertisement for a repeat <laughs> <laughs> right like, you gotta lie to me lie to me but don't lie don't lie to me so blatantly <laughs> it's, it's literally an advertisement for a repeat see it's different though it's a different edit yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, WrestleMania 11, like, yeah. there's a lot you could edit out of it. Oh, God, yeah, no, it's not a, not a good show. Um, all right, okay, so, look. See, before we go off, I'll just, t- I'll take a quick look through my notes, just see if there's anything, anything we could cover in, like, like a minute, a minute and a half that we well, could Well, look, uh, I, I would ask for a rating of the overall show. Like, we, we, we've said with one and two, they were better than some of the parts on your reward watching. Is three it, worth watching, or can you skip three? That's kind of, like, it's it's Probably very much it's very much the same again here. Even the Bret Hart match, sure, great Bret Hart matches are two a penny. Like yeah, every match he has is is, is a great match. Uh, there's Unless nothing, it's with Goldberg. Yeah, <laughs> um, there's nothing here that is worth going back to watch. In order to watch, the only the only value in going back here is to see the show as a whole, to see how this whole in your house thing kind of develops because it is like a, a fascinating way of doing like that's a great idea semi B level pay-per-views and um, and it is genuinely hilarious like how some of like the major developments in it like the the championship 
the tag titles changing hands, how on Monday they just go, thanks for your money. That doesn't count. <laughs> you know? uh, so there's there's nothing in here that's worth watching as a match, like just on its own. But if you are like a fan of wrestling history or whatever, it's definitely worth viewing as a as a whole, as a as a one off experience. It's less than two hours. Pour yourself a couple of drinks, open a big bag of crisps and just laugh your way through. There we go. Uh, next week, folks, we're going to be looking at SummerSlam, obviously from WWE and, and then doing a, a pre-AW uh, show. Um, we have a couple of things coming up as well. But um, for myself, from Martin, from Dave, this has been uh, the Wrestling Rewind here on Phoenix 92.5 FM, the True Penny Channel, Nerd to Know Media. And of course, if you want to go over to, Spot- to uh, Spotify, you can get the shows there, but go over to Patreon where you can give us an X-Pac Euro we would appreciate it. And uh, we'll have some more bonus content as well. And follow us on social media. That's also uh, really helpful. So from all the lads, I've been Dara. We'll talk to you next week here on the show. Bye, guys. See you, Barnett. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production.